What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So the other day, job listings were spotted online from Bandai for a project that Nintendo was contracting and it got people talking about all kinds of different remakes or remasters, which included Star Fox Adventure, even Geist. We'll go over all of that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about some changes that are gonna be happening to Nintendo and Sony's policies with subscription services that more favor the consumers. And we have a major update when it comes to Sony and some of those purchases on the PlayStation Store that were strangely expiring. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below and ring that notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the uploads here on the channel. And we're gonna start today with Witcher 3 and that next generation or current generation patch, that being for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series systems. Well, we did have this tweet that went out that unfortunately we can see does appear to point to an indefinite delay, saying we have decided to have our in-house development team conduct the remaining work on the next-gen version of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. We are currently evaluating the scope of work to be done and thus have to postpone Q2 release until further noticed. They go on to say, we'll update you as soon as we can. Thank you for your understanding. Now, of course, right away, there are a lot of takes on this. What's going on? Because Saber Interactive was working on this version of the game for the PS5 and the Xbox series. Well, we can see this report coming out saying, the release of The Witcher 3 for PS5 and Xbox series disrupted due to a break in relations with the Russian Saber Interactive. Uh, now, Saber Interactive is an American company, but they have branches in different parts of the world, which includes Saber Russia. So at this point, with everything going on with with, uh, with Russia and Ukraine and all that, CD Projekt Red or CD Projekt overall just said, nope, we're cutting ties, we'll bring this in-house. And the unfortunate thing here, obviously, is a lot of the work was done at Saber Interactive Russia, which means it comes back to CD Projekt. Now they have to figure out how far along they were, what did they do, and just try to catch themselves up on it. So... Not really sure when this version of the game is gonna be coming out. If it was set for Q2, I mean, I might even be looking towards the end of the year, but they said they'll keep us up to date. Also, we did have an update around QuakeCon for 2022. We can see this posted up over on their Twitter account saying this year's QuakeCon will once again be a digital only event August 18th through the 20th, 2022. And this is still something, obviously, that these different conventions are trying to figure out. We know Tokyo Game Show and Gamescom are going to be in-person event, whereas QuakeCon's like, well, we can just kind of stream it. This is an event that people did like to attend quite a bit in person, so here's hoping next year they can get back to that. But now thinking about QuakeCon this year, last year I think the big announcement was just Quake being like fully remastered for current platforms and coming out. That was a really cool announcement. That was kind of it. I mean, they also looked at like Deathloop and Fallout 76 and Skyrim updates. This year, however, seems to be a perfect time for them to show off Starfield, maybe a bit more with new features, maybe an entire part of the world they can kind of explore. And obviously that leading up to the November, November release figure summertime for the big reveal and then just more stuff to show at QuakeCon. But who knows, maybe they have another Quake remaster type announcement to come out of nowhere. Oh, and for those of you PC gamers who enjoy using the DualSense controller from the PlayStation 5, as it's pretty obvious that Sony has a pretty big push towards the PC landscape in mind this generation for a lot of their first party titles, it does look like they're at least gonna have a way for you to update that DualSense without needing a PlayStation 5 as a page went live and then was also preserved through like Google Cache. I'll leave a link down below to uh, PSU who went ahead and documented that, but it appears to be an application that would allow you to plug in your DualSense controller to your PC and then just load the latest firmware update, which is good news, because right now the only way to do that is if you have a PlayStation 5, and as Sony is looking to push more and more of their games to PC, over time, like, they haven't done that big day one release yet, but with a lot of these live service games coming up, I think that is just a matter of time, but at least it looks like they are planning out a time for release with this application, so you can just plug your DualSense in and make sure it's up to date on your PC. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with a potential remaster or remake for Nintendo that Bandai Namco is going to be handling. At least that's based on several job listings that were spotted by Reset Era. And we'll go through each one as three in particular were pointed out and got people really excited for the possibilities. Uh, more on that in a minute. But first, 
Let's start with this job listing here. This is for career adoption, 3D action game slash game designer. The job description says you will develop as a planner of the 3D action game project of the Nintendo contract project. I mean, this is using Google Translate, so it might, might sound a little weird like reading it out here, but this one is interesting because if you look under the responsibilities, it includes stage and level design according to the game design, which is an interesting thing to see there for a, for a remaster or potentially a remake. Going on a bit further here, we have uh, this one, career adoption for 3D action game background artist. You'll be asked to do image sketching and 3D background production work for desi design consideration as a visual artist for a 3D action game project on a Nintendo contract. On to the next one here, this being for 3D background HD remaster. There's the obviously the word that people are pointing to now. As a visual artist for a 3D action game project on a Nintendo contract, you'll be required to perform HD remastering of the 3D background. Now we do know that Bandai, Namco, and Nintendo have worked together quite extensively in the past, something like Pokemon Tournament. Uh, they did new Pokemon Snap, which is, to be honest, like the best looking Pokemon game so far. And they, they did a lot of work on Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, uh, mixed in there with Sora Limited, of course, with Sakurai, that, that's his company, and then Nintendo. So Bandai has, has worked quite a bit there uh, with Nintendo on different projects and first party stuff and third party stuff with, with something like Smash Brothers, where you bring in all these different intellectual properties and there's a lot of trust involved there for that to get done. So now everyone's thinking, okay, what would Nintendo contract out a project for Bandai? Like what could that be? Because if it's a remaster, you start to think of, okay, action games in particular, not like uh, like RPGs or anything there, something that would fall in line with maybe Kid Icarus Uprising. That's the big one that a lot of people are pointing to right now. That being from the 3DS. And I, I think that would be a really cool game to move over because otherwise the Kid Icarus uh, IP isn't just isn't doing much and bring it to the switch to be honest would probably introduce that to a lot of people now Of course though this brings up the question of would it translate well to the switch since with the 3ds There's two screens. You also have a touch screen a stylus all this stuff. I mean that game came with an entire stand because the controllers were, were so weird to get used to and uh, That would be something I would like to see to me after seeing them do something like Skyward Sword and figure that situation out, why not? I'm sure they could figure something out here uh, with Kid Icarus Uprising. Otherwise though, people started to think of Star Fox, which, yeah, sure, why not? Do something with Star Fox. And you look back on the GameCube, which if they are doing remastering of it, yeah, I mean, you look to that generation. Star Fox Assault came up pretty quickly and Star Fox Adventure, you know, I'm very happy that a lot of people looked at Star Fox Adventure because I liked that game. I had it back on my GameCube when it came out and I thought it was a blast, even though it wasn't technically a Star Fox game. I know it was like Dinosaur Planet and, and they just kind of morphed it into Star Fox over time. I've also seen things like Geist come up, which I, I thought everyone forgot about that game. That would actually, that'd be kind of cool to see Nintendo hand that off to Bandai and just go, hey, see what you can do with this. And F-Zero of course comes up. That's kind of a racing game, but I mean, I, I guess you could classify it as, as an action game. And then Metroid Prime, but not necessarily the first one because if we're going off of rumor and all, that's supposed to have been done now and they're just kind of set up for when they want to release it after a reveal. Metroid Prime 2 and 3, however, do come to mind. Would they hand that off to Bandai? I remember there were rumors that it was Bandai along with Nintendo who kind of messed up Metroid Prime 4 originally. So I feel like I would get away from the Metroid series with them and yeah, try something like Kid Icarus. So I guess we'll just keep an eye on this one. It drew a lot of interest because obviously everyone's imaginations are running wild and it could end up being something that disappoints heavily online. That's usually what I end up like leaning towards. But the prospect of Kid Icarus Uprising or even better, Star Fox Adventure, that is a lot of fun to think about that getting a remaster or a remake for the Switch. Next up, let's talk about a major update when it comes to Sony and some of the purchases that people were mentioning were expiring. Things like Chrono Cross, digital downloads that maybe people bought a while ago and were going to re-download would come back with a year of like 1969 or 1970 as to when that game had expired. Now, there were some theories going around that Sony was trying to chop these down or even square when it came to 
Chrono Cross Remastered coming out, but then we saw other titles which included just Vita games in general like Unit 13. Well, it looks like the leading theory when it comes to this being a, a Linux epoch situation where it was resetting itself back to like the default time was correct because it appears to have been fixed. We can see this tweet that was posted up from Christopher who was following up with a previous tweet going over their expiration of Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross. They were kind of going back through their library just to see if they were having the same situation happen. But now it appears that after connecting to the internet again, it has been fixed where we can see the before image showing that 1969 for expiration now having just nothing there. It's just like a, a like a dash showing that there is no expiration date with the start time there. So obviously this is good news overall, but remember this is still a look at what could happen in the future if it really does become an all digital setting where you have no physical media and you're very reliant on these servers to even just keep its time or its authentication correct. I mean, if we get to a point where different games just expire and these companies don't think to go back to fix it, then you're kind of just left out or a company goes out of business or, or something. Remember, this is always possible. Back during the 90s, I figured Sega was gonna be around indefinitely when it comes to creating consoles and well, here we are now where Sega's talking about some sort of super game lineup with NFTs and, and, and all this stuff. So yeah, uh, good news right now with this update, but who knows what the future holds when it comes to the digital side of things. Also, I didn't see anything about an update with Nintendo and the Wii and the DSi, so I guess they're up next. Here's hoping they have their own update coming up. Next up, let's talk about Sony, Nintendo, and something that we all seem to keep racking up. And those are subscription services. Now, the, the thing with these subscription services is, let's face it, a lot of these companies hope that you kind of forget about them so that they keep charging you over time. And I'm sure that makes up quite a bit of their revenue. Well, now it looks like Sony and Nintendo are trying to get out in front of the CMA when it comes to guidelines around these subscription services, which is actually a positive change, I would say at least for consumers. We can see this posted up over on gamesindustry.biz saying platform holders join Microsoft's efforts to update online services following CMA's investigation. That's the Competition and Markets Authority. They go on to say Sony has agreed to implement new measures for PlayStation Plus subscribers, which includes contacting long-term customers that haven't used the service for a while to remind them how to cancel subscriptions. If users don't cancel the service but aren't actively using it, Sony will stop taking payments. Nintendo has also altered its business practices. Its Nintendo Switch online service will no longer be sold with automatic renewal set as the default option. If users wish, wish to turn it on, they will need to do so after signing up. I mean, come on. How many of us have been caught up in that web? You sign up for a 30 day free trial or a week free trial, and then you remember you had it when it's on your billing statement at the end of the month for $19.99. Sony does appear to be going a bit further here, mentioning that they would be actively canceling it for inactive accounts and even reaching out, just make sure you know how to cancel, which the early days of subscription services, I feel like that cancel button was just always hidden or you had to talk to someone. Now it's, it is a bit easier, but it's still a whole thing to cancel any of these subscription services most time. So I like that we're at least seeing some of these kind of changes, but I feel like we have a ways to go in a world that is just filling up with subscription services everywhere you look. We're talking obviously about video games, the entertainment industry here, but I mean, it's just, it's everything. Food is, is one, right? Uh, then you also have like just logistics and shipping with Amazon Prime and the list goes on for just everyday life. So I'm hoping this is more, in terms of like uh, like these automatic payments and inactive accounts is are, are just guidelines that just kind of sweep across all industries with these subscription services because one thing's for sure, we're gonna be seeing a lot of them over the coming years. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about the UK sales for the month of March because there's a bit of a surprise here based on what we tend to see, which is like the Switch at the top or maybe the PlayStation 5, depending on revenue counted or how many they're able to ship. Well, in March, it looks like the Xbox was the top system. We could see this posted up over on gamesindustry.biz saying Xbox is top console for March. The 112,000 games consoles sold in the UK last month is a rise of 21% over Febru February. However, so far this year, console sales are down 46%. This, of course, driven by stock shortages for PlayStation and Xbox devices. However, Xbox Series consoles saw the biggest increase in sales during March, up 61% compared with 
February. And a lot of this has to do with Microsoft, indeed, just getting more stock out to stores. Now, Nintendo did have their Switch sales fall 21% month on month, but it's still the, be uh, the second best selling console for March with Sony's PlayStation 5 actually being at the end here in third place. But according to them, Sony's latest machine did see a 45% rise in stock compared with the month before, which tells us that February wasn't a great month either for Sony when it comes to stock. Now, if we look at, at the top games here for the month, this includes digital and physical, minus Nintendo's games, obviously, because Nintendo just does not share those digital numbers with basically anyone. Uh, but we can see at the top, Elden Ring, no surprises there. We already know it sold well over 10 million units very, very quickly. Gran Turismo 7 at two, Grand Theft Auto 5 at three, because why not, I guess. And then we have FIFA 22 at four, WWE 2K22 at five, Tina, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands at six, Grand Theft Auto Online at seven, Pokemon Legends Arceus, no digital copies included there, by the way, at, at eight. Then we have Horizon Forbidden West at nine and Kirby and the Forgotten Kingdom at 10. So the obvious thing is it's very difficult to tell exactly how in demand these different systems are because of the stock shortages. I mean, it's at the point where if you can ship out more systems, you're probably gonna top the sales chart that month. And we know Microsoft has been pushing heavy to get stock out. And there have been talks that they even paid for priority over other companies like Nintendo and Sony in order to secure enough chips to ship out Series X and Series S systems. But the Xbox took the top spot in the UK sales charts for the month of March. And now I'm very curious to see how it did in the MPD sales charts, which we should be finding out in the coming weeks. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I asked which of these action games would you like to see remastered or remade for the Switch? Now the top one was Metroid Prime at 47%. I thought about leaving it off because, well, it, it, based on rumors and all this going around, that appears to already be in the books and we're just kind of waiting for the reveal. But the next one was Kid Icarus Uprising. And I'm not too surprised about that just because it is left on the 3DS. And I mean, if they do it right, that could be a really cool Switch title that would be new to a lot of people. But look at number three, Star Fox Adventure, get Star Fox Assault out of here. 6% on that, 13% on Star Fox Adventure. I'm very proud of everyone who voted in this poll. Also, shout out to the 4% of people who voted for Geist. I see you. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Friendly Neighborhood Phantom Thief saying, can't say I'm really surprised about VR2 at the moment. Doesn't seem to be much point in rushing it out when PS5 accessibility is while better than it was before, still pretty bad. Yeah, that's kind of a problem for Sony. You think about how the, the audience for VR is still smaller, right? Like it's not gonna blow up right away to be this 20 or 30 million unit thing that's just flying off store shelves based on what the original PlayStation VR did, which was still good. It sold over 5 million units. But then you think about the, the PlayStation 5 right now and how Sony's having a really hard time just getting stock out there. And that's one of the requirements to want to get a PSVR 2 in the first place. Yeah, it's tough. You know, I, I know Sony wanted the highest end visuals, you know, like the top of the line specs for the PSVR 2. But I do wonder if it would have been a better idea to go the route of what we see with like the Quest VR right now, where it's all in one and you don't need another device like a PlayStation or a PC, if that would have been the better route when it comes to sales overall. I will say I am more interested in the PSVR 2 because they're promising a high quality experience, but I, I think if Nintendo or Microsoft decided to dive into VR, going with an all-in-one solution that wouldn't need their systems or a PC would be the best route. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today, whether there's Sony and Nintendo changing up their subscription service policies. Have you been caught by that auto renewal in the past before? Let me know about that. And then obviously, what is this remaster or remake that Bandai Namco is working on for Nintendo. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.